If you've been keeping up with World of Warcraft, you probably saw everyone talking about the state of the game recently. From Asmongol to Zaryu to Marsilian to many others, everyone is asking themselves the same questions. How to save WoW? Can WoW be saved? How to make WoW better? Will WoW ever reach its 2011 glory days of 12 million subscribers ever again? Maybe. Maybe not. But there is no denying that WoW is changing, and is currently on an upwards trajectory. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, you, the viewer. Okay, sponsor is not the right word, but you are what keeps the wheel turning. If you like what I make here and want to support me, remember to hit the like button, leave a comment to start a conversation and subscribe for more. All of these things give the algorithm a happy signal that helps the channel grow. For every person that likes the video, you will get to see the counter go up. I won't get a single cent out of this, but we all love a big number, so keep pressing those buttons. Now back to the video. With that out of the way, what do these recent changes mean? And how do they affect the state of the game going forward? Before we dive into it, let's explore the core challenges Blizzard is facing when having to make these decisions. First things first, it's important to understand that WoW's main demographic is men ages 25 to 45, aka older working men, with the overall population skewing towards the 30 plus range. Don't believe me? Here's two examples of the viewership demographic on two of my WoW videos. I'm sure other content creators' graphics will look slightly different, but I'm confident when I say they will strongly resemble mine. These graphs tell a story on their own. First, it's that the game predominantly appeals to an older audience that has a different interest than the younger generations. What those interests are, we're going to get into in a minute. Still don't believe me? Type your age in the comment section below, and if you're under 18, maybe don't. Second, the target audience now has a different distribution of free time to play games compared to when they were younger. When you were in high school or college, you could get away with skipping some classes to play games and catch up later. You didn't have many responsibilities and you could maybe even make your own schedule of when and for how long to play. You also didn't have a lot of money to splurge around on every new game, so investing a large amount of time into a single one was pretty normal, no matter how good or bad it was. As an adult, you don't get to choose when you go to work and your responsibilities eat away at your free time. You now have a lot more money to buy games, but your limited time simply ends up creating a backlog of games you'll never be able to go through. With a limited amount of time, every game has to count. What this ultimately means is that World of Warcraft will struggle to retain players for as long as it used to, and the audience will slowly dwindle over time. So, if you're Blizzard and your biggest game looks like the Titanic slowly moving towards the iceberg, what do you do? The first obvious answer is to cater to a new or younger audience. Just as we used to be young playing World of Warcraft back in the day, there are many new kids ready to jump into games today, even more than back in our day. But there's a catch. When we started playing World of Warcraft, multiplayer games were not as common. The prospect of a shared world where you can play with people from the other side of the continent, or even the world, was still new and fresh, with the technology still developing. Nowadays, however, you have a new multiplayer game popping up every other day. World of Warcraft is not just competing with other MMOs, it competes with every other online game on the market. Realistically, it competes with every other form of entertainment on the planet, but for the purposes of this video, we're sticking to direct competitors. Then there's the issue of generational interest. In the early 2000s, MMOs, RTS games, side-scrollers, turn-based RPGs, and arena or lobby-based shooters were all the rage. Today, MMOs are replaced by live service games, RTS games are replaced by MOBAs, Side-scrollers and turn-based games are replaced by action games, and arena or lobby shooters turned into battle royales and team-based shooters. Times change, and with them, so do trends. Kids nowadays, much like us back in the 90s and the early 2000s, don't have a lot of money to spend on games. But the difference is, they don't have to. 
Many of the genres outlined above have a low cost or no cost of entry and immense replay value, while still offering all the benefits of multiplayer co-op experiences we receive from World of Warcraft. More importantly, however, these games offer a singular, focused and specific experience. MMOs cater to a wide variety of people with varied interests across a range of playstyles. This means they can never truly provide the polished and high tier experience in every field, as they need to focus their attention on multiple aspects of the game at the same time. If you're someone that really loves PvP in World of Warcraft, I pity you. Imagine telling a 16 year old that in order to play PvP in WoW, you need to pay a sub fee, level a character for days or weeks, spend weeks gearing up, spend another 100 hours reading or watching countless guides to understand what every spec can or cannot do, play PvE content you probably have no interest in to get the right gear, install a dozen add-ons and make multiple macros, just to get started. And if your preferred spec or class doesn't perform to your liking or gets nerfed, you have to start over. Sure, some players might be tempted to try it out, or they could just jump into a game of Apex Legends, pick up a weapon and start shooting. It's free, it doesn't require any setup or external tools, there's fewer characters to learn, only 2-3 abilities to memorize, and you can change your character right off the bat if you don't like it, with no real drawbacks. If you don't like the first character you played, just try another one. And by the time you've learned to play the game, you already have enough resources to unlock one or two new characters that you may be interested in. On top of that, with the game only focusing on the PvP component, it means you can always expect it to be constantly updated and cater to the specific needs or cravings you have. Before anyone starts typing, this isn't a matter of entitlement or dumbing down the game, it's a value proposition. I specifically chose PvP as an example because these modes require a lot of time investment in order to get better at. Players jumping into Valorant, Apex, Overwatch, League of Legends, Dota 2 or Street Fighter 6 are there because they like the challenge and they value the pursuit of mastery. What they don't like is homework and chores. If you want to be good at World of Warcraft PvP, it takes you 50 to 100 hours at least of fluff just to get started. By contrast, if you're playing Dota 2, you're 100 hours into mastering your preferred character or playstyle at the same point in time. So if World of Warcraft, the 20 year old game, wants to capture this newer audience, it needs to drastically change to accommodate and draw in this new demographic. And this is the part where we hit a new wall. If you change the game to appeal to the new audience, that doesn't really have any interest in MMOs, what happens to the old one? It doesn't take a statistics expert or a NASA scientist to see the outcome of such a shift. The answer is, your old demographic leaves and your game that's slowly bleeding out is dead overnight. So now we're at an impasse. You can either sit by and watch your 20 year old cultural behemoth reach its inevitable end in just a few short years, or you inadvertently mercy kill the game yourself and potentially your company with it. Not a great prospect for the future, is it? But what if there was a way to save it? And what would that even look like? Well, what if I told you we're already seeing the answer play out as we speak? How do you save WoW? Easy. You bring your old audience back. I know, I know, it sounds patronizing when you put it like that, but the steps to get there are anything but simple. We established earlier that the core audience is getting older and has less time on their hand to play the game. That won't be changing anytime soon. That said, this audience still loves Azeroth and would love to get back into it, if they could. Many, if not most of you that quit the game were probably ecstatic seeing Chris Metzen at BlizzCon 2023 and are looking forward to the Dragon Soul Saga. Going back to some of your favorite old zones, exploring the old lore and expanding on it, your foot starts moving on its own and you're almost one step through the door, but you haven't committed yet. You know that as much as you want to take that step, the time investment is too high and you're getting ready to pull back. But you might not have to. If you've been paying attention to Dragonflight recently, you probably noticed that a lot of content has recently been toned down in difficulty and many systems have been slowly shifting towards getting you back into the action faster, 
going into the war within, we also know more changes are coming and the game is likely to slowly but surely reduce the barrier to entry with each patch. Blizzard finally understands that you can't commit 40 hours a week to do what you love anymore and it's trying its best to accommodate that. Even if you have the time, they need to compete with all the other things you love. And as such, every piece of content you do has to be more meaningful and rewarding. Blizzard's answer? Trimming down the excess. Dungeons are getting more streamlined. Heroics are now a little bit harder, but also reward better gear. Mythic now starts off without a timer, has fewer levels, and the affixes kick in later. And they're also not as deadly, allowing more people to get into them, learn and experiment with less hassle and worry about the meta. Delves, a new type of open world content coming into the next expansion, looks to add another dimension to your progression process, so even if you don't have the time to jump into Mythic Plus on a weekday, you can still get a shot at meaningful loot with a lower time investment. The addition of the world track on the weekly vault further reinforces this philosophy. Many systems going forward will become account-wide, thanks to the new Warbands progression system. No longer will you have to grind the same reputation 10 different times on every character, walk to every flight path on the map to unlock a new location, or collect transmog with specific characters or armor types. You will also get access to account-wide bank tabs, making the item transfers a lot easier. Goodbye one-man throwaway guilds, I guess. You will also have access to special warband gear that you can collect while playing your main and send over to your alts, allowing them to skip the boring early steps that you've already gone through many times over. For the first time in many years, World of Warcraft finally accepted it needs to grow up in line with its audience. That said, it's not all sugar and rainbows. Gear progression takes a long time in the current model, with multiple gear upgrades and constant grinding for minor improvements that become entirely invalidated the next patch. Many of the changes, like reputation progress, do not apply retroactively, at least for now. Many of the specs are overly complex and convoluted, requiring hundreds of hours to even understand, let alone master. Add-ons are still a major issue when it comes to raiding, PvP, or sometimes even just being able to play certain specs effectively. Mythic raiding remains inaccessible for the vast majority of people due to the staggering jump in difficulty, requiring a constant and radical nerfs to even be considered a part of the game as a whole. As for the PvP scene, uh, let's just say it's currently in a coma and nobody really knows if it will ever wake up. We're still waiting on that one. Many improvements still need to be made, there's no doubt about it. And while we're not there yet, Dragonflight and The War Within seem to have finally understood the assignment. This new direction won't be for everyone though, and considerable number of players will prefer the slow burn model of yesteryear, more time consuming and meaningful progression systems, or a wider gap between those that play more and those that don't. Likewise, for players that prefer to dedicate most of their playtime to a single game, there will not be enough content to keep them engaged. Not that there ever was. These are concerns that Blizzard needs to take into account, absolutely. But I think we have a brilliant solution in place right now, in the form of classic servers. Between the vanilla servers, expansion servers, Season of Discovery, and Hardcore, Blizzard is trying to provide something for everyone. The World of Warcraft community may be more fragmented as a result, but I believe this is a healthy direction for the game as a whole. This way, retail can continue to evolve and grow in line with the changing landscape of gaming and its audience, while also keeping players dissatisfied with this new direction engaged through the other variations of WoW. And for those that still can't get enough WoW pumped into their veins, Staggered releases of patches between the various versions means you can always jump from one version to another every few months and keep things exciting. Some of you may still not be convinced, and I hear you. If there's anything to take away from this video, it's this. Keep an eye out for World of Warcraft over the next year, because many exciting changes are on the horizon, and we are inching ever closer to our first hands-on with this new version of World of Warcraft. It might not be 2011 anymore, but it sure starts to feel like it 
one patch at a time. And with that, I leave you with a question. Do you plan on returning to World of Warcraft in the War Within? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments how you feel about this new version of WoW. Until next time, I'm VTX Shiva, your friendly neighborhood Snow Leopard, signing out.